Well, uh, when uh, Zelensky, whom I respect very much, the Ukrainian president, when he is repeating, we are defending European civilization, the civilized world, and so on and so on. You know, this is a very ambiguous statement for me. On the one hand, yes, this is true. But I think that the line that separates civilization from barbarism is nonetheless ultimately a line within each country. Yes, defending Europe, but the very, the highest notion of barbarian horror, Holocaust, Nazism, this was an event which happened in the middle of the most civilized Europe in Germany. So while I advocate, don't misunderstand me, full support, give them arms and so on, to Ukraine, we should never forget that we are not just defending the fortress Europe. We also should be very careful what message are we giving to the third world countries, for example. <laughs> Sorry. For example, I have friends who are absolutely not anti-Semitic in some Arab countries. And they told me, okay, now, haha, big discovery, you discovered that Putin is a war criminal. But a couple of years ago, when, in order to save the uh, Syrian regime of Assad, he was bombing Aleppo, the bombing was much more brutal. Why didn't you react more forcefully then? I think it would be, it would be a great mistake if Europe limits itself to this closed fortress mentality. Never forget the battle that is going on now is also the battle for the billions of people in the third world. We should be very attentive to this. And don't please forget my true heroes. I'm in contact with them. I make statements for them. No, Russia is not only a barbarian country. There are thousands of people, many of my friends, who simply disappeared, who protest them. And as I said in a statement, uh, those who protest against Putin openly in Russia today, they are not some abstract internationalist. They are the true patriots. They are defending what is worth defending in Russia. Our motto today should be, the most disgusting slogan that I can imagine is, my country right or wrong. No, if you truly love your country, you must be able to be ashamed of your country when it's doing something wrong. Yeah. I think that Russian dissidents, Russian protests, not only among intellectuals, I hear from my friends in Ukraine horrible stories about ordinary Russian soldiers. They were not well-trained uh, uh, conscripts. They don't even have enough provisions, food. You have tragic comic scenes that Ukrainian people uh, uh, bring food to ordinary Russian soldiers. They don't get enough provisions. Russian soldiers don't know where they are and so on. So we have to bear in mind this complexity and always remember our struggle now is a universal struggle. Don't talk the language of defending uh, uh, European soul, spirit, truth against the Euro-Asian soul. If you talk like this in the terms of class of civilizations, you are already speaking the language of Alexander Dugin. Putin's uh, court philosopher, who well, precisely sees this as the conflict of two models, Western European liberal model and Russian model. Well, do, do you think the Russian soldiers know what the mission is? Because we um, read yesterday about uh, some, a prisoner of war who was taken who said, we were told that we're fighting Nazis. Of course they are, of course they are told this. And we have to be here absolutely clear and open. Yes, there may be some marginal uh, proto-Nazi, not really groups in Ukraine. But don't forget, 
in Russia they are also Putin's secret army. I think this is the key to all of it. Putin's secret army, as your our listeners should know, the so-called very mysterious group Wagner, a private group of mercenaries, yeah. not part of the official army, but of course they are total. And they and so on and so on. Also, when Russians claim they are fighting uh, neo Nazis there, just look at whom Putin refers to philosophically. Uh, 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 Ivan Ilyin, a Russian philosopher, theologist who 100 years ago openly advocated Russian fascism as the only solution for Russia. Look whom is Putin supporting in the last decade or two. Precisely this half directly fascist right wing fringe party. Uh, Alternative for Germany in Germany, uh, uh, Lega du Nord in Italy, Man- Marine Le Pen in France, and so on and so on. That's the reality. And I especially want to appeal here to leftists. There are still, to my shock, some leftists who think that, you know, the United States are the big imperialist hegemonic power, so whatever Putin is, he is the United States, there must be something good in him. No, just look at who Putin is. Putin clearly is a neo-fascist. I'm not saying we should now send bombers against the Russian and this world war. But one thing has to be made clear. This is already, at now up to a point, a proxy war, but already a war between Europe and Russia. And we have to proceed uh, strategically, being careful what we do, but at the same time with full awareness of what is going on. The crucial thing that happened, in fact, is how three, four days ago, in an interview, Putin said, remember, we have some military operations there in Ukraine, but Russia is still doing uh, doing commerce, delivering oil and gas to the West. So this is his, Putin's vision of a new world order. You have your sphere where you can do all the bombings and so on, otherwise life should not go on as normal. This is Putin's peace. I call him ironically a hot peace as opposed to cold war. Yeah, I, I, 